Hello everyone, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Michael and today I'm going to show you how I make sauerkraut. So basically sauerkraut has two ingredients in it, which is cabbage and I've got 10 pounds of organic green cabbage, but uh, red cabbage works just as well also. And we use salt and uh, I'm going to be using this 10 liter uh, crock today to be to put my uh, cabbage in for it to be fermented. So I'm gonna show you how, that, how we get that started. So to begin with, I'm going to uh, take my cabbage and I'm going to take off a couple of the outside leaves here and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those once we uh, do that. So we'll be saving some of the prettier leaves on the outside here. But we need to core the cabbage. So I'm gonna cut it down the middle And then I'm going to cut it in a quarter. And I'll do the other side as well. Then we can see the core here. You can see a little bit better on this one. We'll take the core and I need to cut that out because we do not want that in our cabbage. And I'm going to put that into the trash. So I've got a knife and I've also got a um, muley here. I'm going to see uh, which one is going to do the best. I normally just use a knife, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just cut just a little bit of this and kind of show you how this is going to be. So you can kind of see here that it's about maybe a quarter of an inch uh, on the size of that. So that's where we're going to go with that today. So I'm going to continue to cut uh, the rest of the cabbage up and I'll be back and show you what that looks like and we'll go on to the next step. I'm back and I've shredded my cabbage. I wound up using the uh, Cuisinart and it has a little attachment on the one of the blades that has a shredder. So I started out using the knife and the muley and wound up using that and that just took care of it very quickly. So if you've got one of these and you've got that attachment, I would definitely recommend that. But if you don't, you can definitely use a, a knife or a uh, muley if you've got one of those. So. I have measured out uh, each one of these pans that I've got is uh, five pounds each. And the, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add our salt. And the salt, the only thing that I've ever used is this Morton's canning and pickling salt. Uh, when I was taught how to make kraut years ago, uh, I was told not to use iodized salt or any other kind of salt that might have any kind of additives in it because it could prevent or prohibit the uh, growth of the um, actually the fermentation of the cabbage into kraut. So uh, I was told to use this, that's all I've ever used. And uh, it's relatively cheap. I got, uh, I think you can get these at the store, a couple of bucks. Uh, so they're relatively cheap on that. So this just has the plain salt in it. It doesn't have any other things in it. There's no iodine or anything in it. So that's what I've used to do that. So for uh, five pounds of cabbage, you want three tablespoons of salt. So I've got that measured out here. And uh, for the total batch that I've got, I'll be using six tablespoons of salt for the 10 pounds that I have up here. So recommended if you have five pounds of cabbage, use three tablespoons of salt. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just kind of spread this out over the top of it a little bit there. And then we're going to take your clean hands and we're going to go in and we're going to massage the salt into the cabbage. And what that's going to do is it's going to release uh, a lot of the water that's in the cabbage and that's where you're going to get your water from uh, that's going to go into our crock here for that so I'm going to continue to add my salt to this and uh, I will let this uh, sit uh, maybe 15-30 minutes sometimes an hour just depending on what kind of conditions you've got in your home uh, we're going to try it at 15 minutes and see what we come up with and I will be back once I've gotten everything uh, wilted down and I'll show you how to pack the uh, the crock with that. So again, for five pounds of cabbage, three tablespoons of salt, and just let it wilt down. And you'll see the moisture as it starts coming out of the cabbage as you massage it in. It'll start going down in size. So I'll see you when we get back and uh, we'll show you how to uh, pack the crock next. I am back. It's been about half an hour and my cabbage has released a lot of the water. This little tool here that I got, uh, I would come in on occasion and just come in and just give it a little push and twist just to kind of help it along a little bit. 
and you'll see here in just a minute how much water is actually in this thing. So uh, looking at what I've got here, I actually went down to a smaller crock. I've got a five uh, liter crock here that I'm going to load this in. I think it'll fit in here nicely. So we're going to put it in this five liter crock and uh, I'll show you how that works. So one of the other tools I've got is this wooden pounder and uh, we'll take the, take the cabbage, we'll put it in here, then we'll stick this in here and pound it down in there to make sure that we get it packed in there tightly and so that um, we can get as much juice out of it. Also even packing it in there with this tool is going to help it release a little bit more water. So uh, we don't want any air pockets down in it also. So we want to make sure that all of that gets pushed out of there with this. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and show you how this is going to work. So I'm just going to pick up just a little bit of the cabbage and we're going to make sure that everything is really clean as we load this into this crock. And we'll take our little wooden pounder and we'll pound that around. Alright, as you can see the crock is just a little over halfway filled up with that and we've got quite a bit of juice in there. I don't know if you can see with me pushing on this tamper that there's quite a bit of juice in there. So I wanted to show you close up here what the next step is and then uh, show you where we're going to go with that. But the lettuce leaves that we'd saved earlier, this is where you want to take these and we're going to lay those flat across the top of it to cover the interior uh, down inside there so that we get a full coverage of that. And then once we get those on, then we'll put our stones in on top of it and that's going to weight it down. So what you ultimately want is you want to have at least an inch and a half to two inches of fluid uh, above the stones and uh, that's where you want that to rest. So I'm going to give it just a few more minutes here on the counter. I'm going to tamp it down just a little bit more and see if I can get some more liquid out of it and uh, see where we're at with it. There is a, another solution that you can make up and it is uh, six tablespoons of the uh, canning and pickling salt per gallon of water. So if you don't have enough of uh, the uh, juice that come out of the cabbage to cover the stones, you can al also make up a saline solution and put that over the top of it. So uh, let me let this sit here for a few more minutes and then I'll be right back and we'll uh, put the uh, pieces together on the top of it as I described and we'll show you what happens next. I'm going to let this sit here on the counter for another five or ten minutes and see if I can get any more liquid out of it, but we're at the basics of where we are at this point now. So as I described earlier, we'll take our, our lettuce or cabbage leaves and we're going to put those across the top on the inside to create a, a seal for the, the shredded cabbage that's in there. What you don't want to do once you put the weights in is you don't want to have any of the uh, shredded uh, cabbage uh, floating on the top at the water level. So uh, that could potentially turn into a mold and you don't want that. So we don't want anything that's going to be floating on the top of the, of the water as it ferments for the next three to four weeks. So I'll put my cabbage in, my, the leaves, I'll put my, the stones in on the top of it and we'll see if we get an inch and a half to two inches of the uh, water above the stones. And if we don't, I'm going to mix up a saline solution of one gallon of water to six tablespoons of this uh, canning and pickling salt and we'll put that in there until we get a uh, at least to get two inches above uh, the the stones and also what you want don't want to do also is there's kind of a natural lip on this one inside of it that I can see you don't want to be above that you want at least an air pocket of at least that much on the top of it so that um, as it ferments it's going to be releasing gas and you want some place for that to come out of there. You don't want that on the top of this right here. So like I say, we'll put the cabbage leaves in, we'll put the stones on, we'll look to make sure we get an inch and a half to two inches of the water above the stones. If I don't, I'll add some of the solution from the looks of it. I don't think I'm gonna to have to add any to it. Then I'm gonna put the lid on it. And the lid itself has these two little vents. So as I talked about the fermentation process, it's gonna be releasing gas, the bubbles, and that is gonna uh, create uh, that gas to come out in there and it will have actually push out of the top of this. So how this is going to work is I'm going to put the lid on it and I am going to make up some of the solution so that I have it ready to go. 
uh, you take that and you fill this little reservoir. Once you get the lid on it, you fill the little reservoir with water and that covers those two vents on the sides and that keeps any air from getting in but it will allow the gases to come out and i'm just going to let this set on the counter for the next three to four weeks and uh, let it ferment and when we come back on this video it will have been uh, almost a month or, or at least a month and we'll show you what this looks like so stay tuned and we'll see what that looks like in one month's time and we'll take it out and put it in jars and show you how uh, i'm going to keep that and eat it we'll talk later See you in uh, three to four weeks. I am back. It's been exactly four weeks now to the day that I put the cabbage in the crock to ferment. And uh, you can really smell the, uh, the fermentation, the vinegary uh, smell from the kraut. So it definitely smells like it's done its job. We'll give it a test here in a minute to see what it tastes like. I opened the, the, uh, the crock up. I took the water out that was holding in the seal here. What I did with that? Every day I'd go by and just look at it. I just kept it on the counter here in the kitchen. I'd go by and look at it, and if it needed a little bit more water, I mixed up a brine solution, and I would just fill the little uh, lip up of this so that it would keep the, the vents covered so that the air no air could get in, but the air could escape when it was coming out as it was making the kraut. So uh, you can see how much I used of that. I, it was pretty much full when I started, so four weeks with the evaporation in the house. Uh, just have to keep a watch on it. You don't want that to run dry uh, when you're making your kraut. So I've got a couple of ways we're going to do this now because I'm just going to store mine in the refrigerator. I'm not going to uh, put it in a hot bath and make it still, uh, shelf stable because I want the probiotics in it. And if you get the temperature up, uh, it will kill the probiotics in the kraut. So that's why you see a lot of it in the stores and things that, you've, that you see that are in the refrigerated section. It's because it hasn't been processed like that. But the, the ones in the, in the cans or the, the jars on the shelves, I don't know that there's too much probiotics in it. And that's what you're wanting. And that's why I make it uh, for that. So um, this isn't the only thing you can use these crocs for. They're, they're used to make pickles. And just any, if you, anything that you want to ferment, you can use them in there for that. So uh, they are on a little bit of the pricey side. But if you use them regularly, they'll eventually pay for themselves. And... And the process that I use with this, it's, it's proven every time I ever made crowd in it that it turned out perfect. So uh, we're going to just store it in the refrigerator is what I'm going to do. So I've got two ways I can do it. I've got quart jars that I've washed. And I originally was going to put it in these. And I've got a funnel here to put it in. And I've got these little plastic lids that I put on it to keep it in the refrigerator. And then I've got one of these uh, six quart or five and a half liter plastic tubs that's got a lid on it that seals down. So I'm probably going to put uh, one of the jars in the kraut, and I'll show you how to do that to pack it in there. And then I'm going to put the rest of it in this container and just keep it in the refrigerator because I eat quite a bit of it. Um, so it doesn't last very long. So uh, with what I made here, you know, it's, it's, it's good in the refrigerator. I'm not going to say indefinitely, but because it's fermented, it'll last a pretty good, pretty good while in the refrigerator. You just have to keep a look at it. And it will continue to ferment in the refrigerator. It won't stop fermenting. Uh, as long as uh, you have not put it in a, in a, uh, a bath to uh, seal the jars, it will continue to ferment. It won't be as fast as it did when it was on the counter, but it will continue to uh, ferment. So I'm going to show you what this looks like now. I'm going to grab some of it up. And you can see here it's got plenty of uh, the juice in it. And the, uh, the actual kraut has changed a little bit of a color. So I've got a clean jar here. And I'm just going to put some of that kraut down into that. All right, we are on our way with that. So I've got to remember the tool I had, the, the, the pink thing. I'm going to pack that down in there pretty tight. And then it, uh, if I need any of the juice, I'll pull some of the juice out of here to fill it up so that it's got it in. There's plenty of juice in this thing. And the rest of it I'm going to put in here. So I will see you back when I get the, the crock unloaded, and I'll put it in the quart jar and put the rest of it in this container that I'm going to seal up, put in the refrigerator. So stay with me, and I'll be right back. I've taken all of the kraut out of the crock now and I uh, filled up the quart jar so you can see that's filled up. It's got a nice pretty color to it. I've got the lid on it and I've got this uh, container here filled up with it as well. 
and this has a, a nice locking seal on it. So I will put that in the refrigerator and I will be eating on that for my dinner. So uh, let me give this a try. I've got a little bowl here with some. I don't know if you could tell from the microphone, but it's got a nice crunch to it. It's got a nice taste to it. So after about three days in the crock, it'll start to start its fermenting process. And you can taste it at 10 days if you'd like to see if you uh, would like it at 10 days. Uh, I've always left mine in there three to four weeks. And some people leave it in there for up to six weeks. So like I say, the longer you leave it out, the stronger the ferment will be in it. Uh, this is four weeks. Three or four weeks is about uh, uh, the, the flavor that I like with them. So that's where I go with it. This will last a while in the refrigerator. I hope this has inspired you to uh, think about uh, the probiotics that kraut has. And if you, you like kraut and uh, want to put down to, to make some, definitely this is a process to make it. There's a lot of different ways to make it, but these crocs have uh, not failed me yet. It's been foolproof every time. So definitely give this a try. If you like this recipe, check out one of these other ones over here and uh, click that like button and subscribe. And all the, the, all the viewers out there that have, have subscribed to the channel, I really do appreciate it to, as I continue to grow this channel. Thank you very much for staying with me today. Try this kraut recipe. I'll put the link in the description for this uh, where I got this and you can check this out also. And uh, we'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye now.